everyone, it's Warren from NQ Explorers. Today it's a World War II uh, relic hunt. This uh, site was a, uh, a camp that was established in um, 1942 and it lasted until just after the war. We believe we've discovered here a dump site that was uh, used by the camp. It's not a substantial area but uh, potentially it's got some great finds in it from uh, all the allies that occupied this camp during the war. So. Um, I hope you enjoy this video and I hope we find some nice relics that'll uh, make it uh, entertaining. Whatever happens, it's going to be a great day out. Beautiful weather, a bit warm today, but uh, let's get into it. Got a great signal in this hole, but there's a centipede here which worries me a bit. I don't want him to tag me. Check him out. Got a good looking stinger on the tail there, so uh, I'll relocate him and then I'll continue digging the hole. This one's a nice high tone 74. 75. I'll just scrape the uh, leaf litter off. Could be a bottle top. Oh no, look what it is. It's a uh, 9mm projectile. Oh no, this one's an 82. It's a little bit jumpy. There was deep grass on top of it, but uh, I've got a larger coil on, so I was getting just a whisper on the proportional audio. And it's getting louder as we go, so it's just in the clay clump here, won't be far down. Now, getting close to the target, see what we got. Turn the pinpoint, it helps. Get something up in here, obviously dug it out. And it's a bottle, a uh, yeah. alloy bottle top, often a wine bottle maybe. That was pretty deep though. Well, that's, I don't know, that may be a uh, baker light with a, a copper centre. I'm not sure what that is actually, it may not be a bottle top. Well, this is a really deep dig and it's just got this gorgeous 42 trepants. Hope you can see it all right there. 42, I can't, is it an S midden mark on the right hand of the two? I think it is. You'll be able to see that there, I'll subtitle that. King George VI, beautiful little bit of sterling silver, 925, fantastic. Where's my neck? Find a snap flute ripper. I think it's a huge uniform button. I think it's US Army. I could be wrong, but uh, I can't quite see it there. It's got something clutching an arrow on the side. So this camp's either going to be uh, US Army, Dutch, Netherlands, East Indy. Army or Australian Army, it's definitely not Australian. So uh, there'll be a maker's name on the back, it's just a beautiful big button. Really um, beautiful patina, it's got the loop on the back. That was an 85. In a lot of, uh, you can see there's a lot of glass here, broken glass. I'm not sure if it's a dump or it's just a site off the side of the camp where uh, these things tend to accumulate. That's an absolute ripper, that one. Here's my next two finds, they're uh, medical in nature, I'd say they're medical bottles from the camp hospital or uh, sick bay. I'll see if there's any markings on it. Doesn't appear to be any. I think that's a little calamine lotion, that one. Definitely World War II. Well, it's the same hole as the two medical bottles. It's got this old padlock. I haven't cleaned it, but I'm going to suggest it be a lockwood. Probably an Aussie lockwood. Caked in clay, but I'll clean that up and take some still shots of that. Look at the stuff that's coming out of this little bottle dump. It's World War II. I'm going to say it's a World War II rubbish dump. The button came out. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of other goodies in here. Next target's a safety razor handle. The next target is a beautiful old World War II teaspoon with the elongated sort of bowl. I'll get a hallmark off that, be electro plate. Some of the Australian Army ones are marked. Um, yeah, this has all come out of the same hole. The button, a couple of bottles, the lock, and the old spoon here. Got this piece of crockery out of it. I'm still on the same dig. Um, it's a Latin motto and a shield and three little devices. Um, I'll look that up and we'll be able to trace that to uh, identify and further establish uh, the use of this site. That's a really nice little find actually. With generally, generally get crockery with that kind of stuff on it. I'm not sure it's. Uh, I don't think it's Australian Army. It might be from a local cafe, but we'll determine that. Yeah, we're still on the same dump. Got a really nice find here. World War II tablespoon embedded in the ground here. Bowl was signaling a 68. It'll be 
hallmark. It's a nice find. I'd say they've dumped a heck, it's more than a dump, it seems to be like uh, an area where they've thrown stuff away after the end of the war. There's my next detecting find in this uh, rubbish, World War II rubbish dump, it's uh, top of an old uh, pepper shaker. Looks like it's brass or, I don't think, it could be an alloy but it was a 76 signal, very solid as you can imagine. Little hinge flip there and I guess it was a glass container underneath. It's got another button, it was smaller than the last one. Um, and it's still got, look, it's a shank. Great condition. Um, it was a 76 solid. We'll give it a bush clean and we'll find out uh, some information uh, and some detail on the front. If I can't determine it in the field, we'll uh, do a wrap at the end, I think, when we've cleaned all this up. Let's scratch this one out of the grass and get an 84. Very shallow. It was very shallow. Came out in the first scrape. And it's a coin. It's a coin. And I think it looks, I can't say it looks silver, but maybe it doesn't. Okay, let's give this a clean. I've got no idea what this coin is. It's very small. And um, we'll get it up close when it's clean. Okay, well, this is an awesome find. Silver coin. I believe it's Canadian. A Canadian five cent, which would equate to our sixpence, roughly. Now, there were no Canadian troops in here, but they obviously came with one of the US troops in his pocket. And I've got some beautiful no uh, silver from Canada. I've never dug a coin of this description. I'm really excited about this. Look at that. This is King George VI. Smiling and facing to the left after being in the ground for 80 years. And, uh... I'm not sure what that design is there. I've never, I'm not familiar with most of the Canadian silver, but I will be when I research this one and we'll uh, put some details up. Now I am really stoked with that. so-called militia units had long ago joined the AIF. Many were as seasoned in jungle fighting as the men from the Middle East. Their lightning thrust now proved their worth. In vicious fighting against fortified river barriers, the 4th Brigade outpaced the tanks. Before the 5th Division linked up with the Americans of the 32nd Division, it covered 97 gruelling miles in 16 days. I right, know, I just got one of those fantastic big buttons about half an hour after the first one you saw me dig. I won't clean this one, I'll leave it till I get home, but that's perfect. Domed, a shank, the whole deal's there. I don't know what they are, I'm guessing US Army, but uh, I can't see any details at all. We'll clean it up and uh, get some information on it. That's an absolute ripper, that one. Just got this giant button, which I believe is a US Army button. I think the other two that I had, maybe... Uh, Netherlands East Indies Army, so the Dutch buttons from Java when the Japanese invaded and the Dutch Army evacuated to Australia. I think this one's American. We're not going to clean it out here. Great nick though. That was a solid 76, as were the others actually. It was quite scratchy, so I may have been sitting at a weird angle in the soil. But um, I think we'll, we'll, we'll call that one a US button, eh? Ripper. Here's my next target recovery. It's the complete head of a safety razor. Well, I just got another ripper of a find. It's another military button. I think this might be the fifth I got out of this site. Uh, looks like another Dutch one, I think. I won't clean it out here in the bush. I'll wait till I get home and do it with a soft toothbrush and some warm water. That's a smaller Dutch button than the early one I got. So, Dutch East Indies Army. Um, evacuated from Java, of course, by the uh, Australian Navy um, when the Japanese pushed through there in 42. And they ended up uh, regrouping in Australia. So, beautiful button. Look at the condition of that thing. Very happy with that. That's a ripper. Well, this may be another button coming out. Similar target ID. It's pretty jumpy. Goes up to 81. Sorry about that. You can really face planted on the hole. You get this down through this grass. I've only got the uh, 5x8 on the max, but um, the buttons are giving all sorts of jumpy target IDs because of the shape and all the other stuff that's in here with them. Not having any trouble detecting them, but. Uh, they're not solid target IDs. Not, none of the ones I've dug have been. 
Note the self bring gloves next time. Look at this glass in here, will you? That's a nail there. It's got to isolate that high tone in there. This pretty deep too, this stuff. Like it's been a fair bit of depth of deposition. I'll just check that with the machine. Of course, you can't just come right from anywhere. Yep, we're still on the center of the hole here. I'm getting a bit concerned now, it's getting a bit deep. Might be a large, a large item. Need to bring a sifter in here and uh, good gloves. That's what I'm going to do with Colleen when I come in next time. Okay, I've got a, an iron target coming up, a large iron target, I think. Oh, maybe not. Okay, i got a tarp loop. That was probably the target. But you can get an idea of the dump conditions we're in here with the, um, the depth of the rubble. I persist it with the same hole. I've got another 76, so it's probably a second tarp loop. Disturbed it now. Getting nails. It's up in this pile here somewhere. I've still got the 76 on the machine. around a bit. Right, I'll persist with this and I'll turn the camera back on when I actually isolate what I'm looking for. Have a look at this ripper. It doesn't get much better than this. Netherlands Indies. It's either a shoulder patch or a cap part of a cap badge. That is just fantastic. I've never really found connections to the Netherlands East Indies Army. Um, and this is it. I've got a couple of buttons down this awesome relic of an army uniform. The Dutch uh, colonial forces in uh, the Dutch East Indies, which is now Indonesia, during World War II. I am stoked with that find. That is an absolute ripper. Here's my next find from the dump. It was an intact padlock in glorious condition, brass with brass hasp, and it's got a brand on there I can't read out here at the moment. The light's not real flash. Um, maybe Australian, could be Dutch or American. That's a beautiful little lock. I just got another glorious button. It's different to the others I've dug here. I'm not sure what this one is. I think there's a crown, so that won't be American. It'll be Dutch, I would think. Maybe that's a Royal Dutch crown. The other one I had with, this, with the lion and the uh, arrow. But uh, I'll definitely identify this. Um, I'm digging all these scratchy little signals. It was the tiniest whisper of a, a one-way direction jumpy high tone, and uh, there you have it. Well, I found the 4th Army. It's an absolutely glorious example of an Australian Army coat button off uh, the normal uh, khaki green wool uniform. That was the scratchiest deep signal. Um, so that's four separate armies. The British Army wasn't here, but I did find a British Army button, which is not uncommon in Australian camps. I think uh, a lot of them came back from the Middle East with uh, British buttons or jackets or whatever. British Army definitely wasn't here, but the Dutch, Americans, Australians were. So I've completed the uh, Allied triad there with that Australian Army button. But have a look at the condition of this thing. I think it might even still have some fabric on it. The shank's perfect. That's an absolute perler. Another piece of cutlery, it's a little teaspoon. It was a nice 60 signal, quite repeatable. And there she is, World War II eating irons. Nice. Wonder how many cups of tea that stirred the sugar into. Could be a bit wind affected here, I'm sorry about that, but uh, this one is out of the hole with an 81. Could be scrap brass, but it was a pretty solid repeatable signal um, with not much tone roll, so. A bit more confident with this one. 
We've got to go and go and get those gloves. It's a bit silly, isn't it? Oh, okay, it's a razor handle. Nice. see me digging today I believe is a dump um, there's lots of glass um, and discarded metal uh, there's lots of targets previously I've got uh, items out of that uh, particular area from the Australian Army the US Army British Army and the Netherlands East Indies Army so um, before we start digging I thought I might give you a little bit of history of why we're finding those relics in this site um, the British Army won is a little bit strange because we didn't have any British Army in this area during World War II. And, uh, we do find British Army buttons in Australian camps. The reason being, though, I believe that uh, the men of the 7th and 9th Division had been into England and uh, Syria, Mesopotamia, Middle East, El Alamein, Benghazi, all there through uh, fighting the Africa Corps with the British Army, either ended up with British jackets or souvenir buttons of British uniforms. I don't know. But we do find British uh, general service buttons. U.S. Army. U.S. Army came out here after Pearl Harbor. Um, Australia was the unsinkable aircraft carrier, uh, so it was a very important logistic base for the Australian U.S. Army uh, and the U.S. Marine Corps, of course, and the U.S. Navy, heading back into the Pacific to retake the Pacific Islands. Um, the Dutch East Indies Army, Netherlands East Indies Army, was not actually part of the Dutch Army. It was a separate force, a colonial force based in Java, in Indonesia, which is the Dutch East Indies. Of course, they were pushed out and evacuated by the Australian Navy when the Japanese took uh, Java. We had a few Australian commandos remaining in Timor fighting a guerrilla warfare sort of thing, but uh, other than that, everyone was out of the Dutch East Indies. So really, um, after the Japanese successes of early 42, the only allies left in the Pacific were Australia, United States, New Zealand. That was it. Canadians were heavily involved in uh, Europe, as were the Australians and the New Zealanders, um, and had been since 1939. Not so the US, of course, until the Pearl Harbor in 41. The reason that Guadalcanal happened was that the Japanese just didn't have the resources to invade a country the size of Australia. Don't forget it's the same size as the United States, massive country. They didn't have the resources, Navy, Army or Air Force, to invade Australia because they'd been heavily involved in China since 1937 and uh, weren't making many inroads into China. Spectacular success throughout Southeast Asia, of course. Now, uh, the US, Australia and New Zealand all had uh, colonial territories and possessions throughout the Pacific, uh, notably for Australia, Papua New Guinea, then they had the Hebrides, and of course uh, the Solomon Islands where Guadalcanal was located. The, the strategic reason that the Japanese landed on Guadalcanal was to cut off communications between the Australian mainland and the US mainland, where they knew all the uh, men and material had to go to fight back. So, uh, well, Guadalcanal is now history. Uh, it was retaken, of course, by the uh, Marine Corps and the US Army. The Australian Army defeated the Japanese at Milne Bay. They pushed back across the Owen Stanleys to the north, north coast at Boona and Gona, where they fought a combined action with the US Army. And from that action, which took many months and uh, cost many lives, the Allies formulated the island hopping policy. They weren't going to, they weren't going to take every island between Australia and Japan to win the war. They would have, uh, they would have been still fighting in the 1960s probably if that had happened. So that's why we're finding these army buttons here. The Netherlands Army was pushed out of uh, Java. Australian Army was here, obviously. U.S. Army on their way north into the islands and. Uh, the final defeat of Japan. So let's hope we find uh, relics from those three armies or four armies if we're lucky. We haven't found a Canadian coin here last time, which I would say was bought here by a US soldier. It was a Canadian 10 cent piece. Um, and the Canadian army, they definitely weren't here. But anyway, enough jibber jabber. Let's go and dig some holes. Okay, just an update on today's equipment. Until now, I've been using AT Max with this, with this uh, smaller 5x8 
optional double D coil. Great for target separation and because there's so many targets I need a small coil, a big coil would drive you mad in here. Um, I've also bought the trusty AT Pro and on that I've got a Nell Snake which as you can see is quite considerably smaller than the Garrett coil. Very sensitive on small targets. I'm going to run over the areas that I've already done initially um, without disturbing the site with the snake and see if I can pick anything else out that that's missed. Really interesting exercise actually. Then we'll start turning it over, uh, raking and dragging the grass back and uh, see what else we can get. So we'll have both pro and uh, max action in here today. Well the pro with the Nell has managed to pick some uh, tiny, tiny, highly conductive targets in the 60s out of the uh, area that are already done with the larger coils. So um, definitely working. <laughs> um, being a smaller size, better target recovery. Um, I've just got a bottle, obviously not metal, but this is typical of what I'm getting out of the site. Medical bottles of this description. World War II, screw top style. I don't think there's any markings on it. Lots of these bottles in here. I'd say this might have been the, like a medical center or a hospital dump, I'm not really sure. Right now, here's my first significant metal find of the day. Also now I've got my gloves on today because there's so much glass. It's a buckle. That's the style I'm not familiar with. Looks like it may have been gilt. Looks like a uniform belt buckle, doesn't it? I'll just check that to see if there's any writing on it. Markings definitely been gilt under there, so possibly Dutch or US. I'll uh, clean it up and we'll do a bit of research on that item. Right, all the snakes paid off with a nice find here. Very shallow target just under this grass. I've got another beautiful military button. I don't know what it is yet. You see it here? No shank on this one. All the others have been in uh, complete width shank. Can't see that design off the top of my head there. Um, we'll give it a clean. Oh, it has got a shank. Sorry. It's right there. Shank's all there. It's all good. Okay, not completely visible there, but I've identified that as an Australian Army button. Um, a uniform coat button. So that's awesome. Very shallow dig that one. It was uh, probably less than an inch underground. Well this is certainly the site for buttons. I've just got this very large button. It was only a 68. It's uh, quite plain. It's got a shank and some maker's name on the back. But I can't... Uh, I think it's just a plain button that's been distorted or melted. I'll uh, have to clean this one and do some still picks because I can't see any design on it. Here's my next reportable target. I'm still using the Pro with the Snake Australian Army webbing brass. That was uh, not a really deep dig. Some of the site digs have been quite deep, but not so this one. Probably only about three inches, but the grass is seven or eight inches above that, so the snake's punching through that. And it's a tiny little coil. Um, the next plan, after all this is done, is to come back with a very large coil in the really grassy areas, like the Attack or the Thunder. Or tornado and um, so we can penetrate through the grass without having to strip it off because it's only going to get worse if, uh, if it rains this side will be undetectable. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little World War II outing with me today. Thanks for watching everybody and happy fossicking. Bye for now.